G'day, g'day, my name is Tom O'Halloran and today we are chatting bolting. I was going to take you out for a day of bolting with me today because that is by far one of the most requested videos that I've gotten, but it's raining and that sucks. So rather than going out bolting, I thought, hey, how about we just dig into the gear that I'm actually using and then when we head out to the cliff, you kind of have a bit more of an understanding of what's cracking. So I'll run you through the hardware, like the drills, the glue, that kind of thing that I'm using. Then we'll dig into the rope side of things and the one bit of kit that I think is an absolute game changer for anyone that's wanting to do anything in the vertical world. To begin with, these are the drills that I use. I've got my Milwaukee 18 volt hammer drill and then I've got my Makita 18 volt impact driver. So Milwaukee, you've got a few in the hammer drill range and this one is the lightest and it 100% does the job. I've got some friends that have got the big higher powered ones, but when you're out on the roof going nah! all day long, you don't need that weight behind it. I've also got this set up on a string around the handle, comes to a little alpine butterfly and then that attaches onto me. Always make sure that you've got full reach with your sling length so you're not getting kind of caught, that sucks. This is what I use to put in my concrete screws, which is my positioners. Just that small little 1.2 amp hour battery goes all day. They just whip in real quick, they come out real quick. Uh, it's just a neat system and the concrete screws just feel absolutely bomber for me. So these are the concrete screws that I use. They're awesome, 10 mil diameter, 60 mil long. Slip onto my little bolt bracket here schlunk and then my little beaner goes through that you whip them up and they're just good to go and this has done quite a few routes now and it's still looking real good staying on the bolt side of things i've got my homemade u-bolts 10 mil stainless round bar i buy it in like big five meter length something and chop it up into 250 mil lengths and then bend it on my bending jig and then once it's bent basically you hit it with a grinding disc and just scuff it up and it gives extra surface area and like grippage for the glue to knock into this one hasn't been notched up it's just still the nice clean bare metal this one has there's an awesome article actually that steve hawkshaw from climbing anchors did I think it was his thesis or something. I'll link it below and it's basically about anchor systems in soft rock. Definitely worth checking out. Drilling the bolts in, super simple. I've got my 10 mil drill bit for my concrete screws, 12 mil drill bit for my glue in bolts. Basically the rule of thumb with the glue in bolts, I'm putting in 10 mil bar, 12 mil here. So an extra one mil either side of the bolt. That gives room for the glue to get in there and get some nice grippage. This is the glue that I'm using. It's the Powers AC200 Plus. Uh, it's a hybrid acrylic. Cure time in 20 degrees is 30 minutes. You pop it in with this super special glue gun. Um, the one downside to these things is that you can't use it as a hammer. I have done that in the past when I've forgotten my hammer and it completely wrecked it and I had to buy a new one. So uh, this is version 2.0. You can actually see probably there's a few little ding marks where I kind of have used it. Um, but I'll endeavor to not break it this time. Now with all that banging around, you need to be safe. I have gone to the hospital too many times getting crud dug out of my eyes. It is flipping uncomfortable. Wear glasses all the time. Also, I wanna be able to hear my grandkids. Always wear your gloves. I thought I used to be able to be a tough guy, not wear gloves, and you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna rug it up my hands. It's gonna be awesome, they can just cop it. You cop the consequences of that. Basically, I've just smashed my knuckles up, I've pinched fingers, blood blisters everywhere. That's not good for climbing. Now I wear gloves. These black diamond ones are super awesome. Just chuck them on your hands, it's worth it. A little rag to cleaning up any mess and a little jar for rubbish, especially when you're using the glue. It's a two-parter and it's gotta mix through and. On the first couple of pumps out of the nozzle, it doesn't mix properly and that stuff's not gonna set. So rather than just pumping that out into the environment, chuck it in the jar and you're doing your bit for the planet to make sure things aren't getting grubby. Two main bits of tooling that I take with me is this hammer and this brush. The Black Diamond Yosemite hammer is totally awesome. Uh, it's got a good amount of weight behind it. It's got this little spiky bit. You can leave a little flakes and dirty bits of rock off. This sling means that it's always there with you. So you can kind of drop it and leave it hanging around and flick it back up and you're ready to go. Plus it comes with a cute little Yosemite bear sticker which you can cover in glue and all sorts of other crud. Can't really see him so much anymore, but it's still there. Good one, buddy. This brush, 
just give it everything a good clean down. One of the most annoying things is when you get on a relatively new route and it just hasn't had a good proper clean. Help out your fellow climbers and let them have a good time in the future on your routes. I don't think this company exists anymore, but gosh, their gear was good. It means that I've got really good gear management throughout the day. So I've got spare batteries in here. I've got bolts in there, maybe some glue and other little bits and knickknack. Just having a good pod bag with you just makes the day that much better. Hit me up in the comments if you use any of this gear. Let me know if I'm off chops with any of the gear that I'm using. I always love learning what's going on. I kind of can head off in my own direction sometimes. Uh, so it's really cool to hear what other people are doing. That's it for the hardware side of things. Let's rip into the rope gear. To begin with, I have the Black Diamond Big Gun Harness. This thing is almost literally built for this kind of work. Really nice cushioning on the inside so it, you're not getting as knackered in your hips and all that kind of thing. There's heaps of these little attachment points. Biggest winner on this harness. These two belay loops make your day that much better. It means your rope management's way better. It means that you're not getting pulled off in weird directions when you have more than one thing attached to you. So my main working line's there and then that magic bit of kit gets clipped onto here. Pretty much always running with a static. Uh, this is about an 11 mil or something, uh, which is pretty chunky these days. I generally like to be on a static rope just because it means that there's less stretch in the system. You can really pull up hard. There's some pretty awkward positions you can get yourself into while bolting and just not having that extra in the system is just a lot better. So that's the benefit over using a dynamic for that kind of situation. Having said that, I have still used dynamic ropes quite a bit for bolting. It's fine. You just get bleh. There's a whole bunch of carabiners. You can never have too many. Bunch of slings, daisy chain. This can make the things a little bit easier for positioning, but the extra tool that I'm telling you about later, so much better. I've got my Juma, it's just this little black diamond jobby. Don't use the handle on these really ever for whatever reason. It just feels better to just grip the top. Uh, and then a little Metolius Easy Step Ada, I think it's called. They're awesome. It's way better than having all of those like eight different little ladder steps in there. They just become bulky. Random quick drawers there. Always just handy to have some drawers just to clip around, makes things kind of easy. I do usually bring along a chalk bag as well. It's just kind of handy for marking out holds. Sometimes I like to sit there and work out bolt positions as well. And you can just kind of then see where the line's going to be. The other benefit of having the chalk bag with you is that Sometimes the root is just that good that you're just frothing off your head and uh, your hands are getting real sweaty. So you just need to like chalk up because otherwise the hammer's just gonna, ooh, off it goes. This bit of kit kind of falls into the sometimes pile. Uh, it's the black diamond chest harness with a crawl on it. I've used it out at Perry's look down when I was bolting there and it's just better than having to jug up and pull 200 meters of rope through your grigri. You can just use your jumar and go, and uh, the rope just feeds through this and then you sit on that. Much better. I always carry with me some rope protectors. This one is nice and thin. It's good for protecting against like abrasion. So if you're going over like just a big roundy slope and the rope's gonna be rubbing over it, it just protects your rope and it protects the cliff. Then we've got this big thick jobby. It Velcros open, the rope slots in there. There's a bit of string that you then can attach to a bolt, to a little tree, to the rope. You just do a little like clove hitch type thing onto it. So it just holds it into position. I don't know what this kind of material is, but some sort of like woven crazy heavy stuff. And that protects against like sharp edges, iron stone, those heavy angles where the rope's kicking along. I have had someone I know die from that. I'm sure most people have heard a story of the rope getting cut. So don't be one of those stories, protect yourself and everything's gonna be a-okay. I'm always using the Grigri, it's awesome. I've got the new one and I've got a few of the older ones. The older ones work much better on my 11 mil rope. This then is the magic bit of kit. It's a Grigri on a string with a sky hook attached to it. It is absolutely game changing for any of the work that you're doing, moving around in the vertical world. The ability to kind of pull yourself in and adjust your position and not being at the whim of the daisy chain increments is so good. Cannot express how much. This will change your life if you're doing any kind of movement in the vertical or horizontal world. One thing it's really easy to forget on a bolting day out is your hydration and food. So I usually just have this little water bottle clipped to me, a few cliff bars in my pocket, and it just means that I'm hydrated and fueled throughout the day. I've been out enough times where I've just not eaten or drunk anything for about five or six hours. You're just hanging in the harness and you just kind of get in this work mode and 
And then you're not feeling particularly good. Well, I think that's pretty much it for all the gear that I use. I'm sure there's maybe a couple of things. I always forget something on a day out at the cliff and uh, that's kind of frustrating. One day I had to go back to the hardware after abseiling in 200 meters to a cliff. That was annoying. Anyway, hopefully you won't forget anything next time you head out to the cliff. I am very keen to make the how I actually use it out in the real world video. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If I've made it already, it's gonna be here. But that's it for now. Have a good one.